This is the Happy Families Podcast with Dr Justin Coulson, where Luke and Susie, a husband and wife radio team with three young boys. This is the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants some answers now. It's nice to talk to you, Susie. Hi, Luke. Uh, hey, mate. Now, the, the, we're, what we're talking about is... Uh, some... Seven things yeah. our children should never hear from us. Yeah. Uh, it's an article that you wrote that really, I guess, you know, it, there's been a lot of talk for a long time about whether it's okay to hit our children. Um, whether it's okay to smack, and and we've talked about that before, Justin. But one of the things that you really highlight here is that just as damaging can be the words that we speak to our children. Yeah, you know, scientists have found that um, the same areas of the brain light up when our children experience psychological pain from the verbal uh, punishment that they get as much as from being hit, it's almost like the emotional pain triggers the same part of our brain as physical pain does. It's, it's quite, quite interesting, and it shows just how important the words we use. Um, you know, we, we need to choose the right words mm. when we're speaking to our children, even when they try us. Yes, <laughs> and maybe maybe especially when they try yeah. us is when we need to be <laughs> choosing words. Particularly then, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, Look, you've, you've put together a list of seven things. I'll run through those quickly and then we, we might discuss a couple of them in more detail. You've got in there uh, name-calling, comparisons, threats, dismissal, nothing, so not speaking at all, guilt and shame, and you don't matter. These are the seven things you're saying our children shouldn't hear from us. Justin. Yeah, yeah, I kind of cringe as, as you go through that list. I mean, it, it was a painful article to write because there's a sort of a, there's a negative energy associated with it, isn't there? Mm. But I mean, let's, let's start with the first one, name calling. Um, there, there just is, uh, we call it um, behaving with contempt towards our children when we name call. Uh, there's a, a fabulous researcher that many people have heard of called John Gottman, and, and he argues that when there's contempt in our relationships, regardless of whether it's with a spouse or, or with somebody else, that we are on the way to essentially destroying that relationship. There's, there's nothing, nothing that our children should ever hear uh, when it comes to name calling. They, they don't need to be called stupid or dumb dumb. They also don't need to be called selfish or conceited or entitled or any of those things. Those labels really do stick and they, oh boy, they, yeah. they just have such an impact. I, I talk to, to adults regularly who say, I remember that day that my dad called me that name mm. and it's just never left me. Well, and, and I have I have a memory like that where, where and it wasn't my dad and my mum were, were beautiful in how they, they spoke to me generally, but there was, a, there was a, one moment in my life where it crushed me, and as an adult, I remember it vividly. But I, my family teased me, Justin, because I, I read some stuff about this when I was a, a young man, way before I had kids, and I made a commitment to, to say, not just not calling names, but not putting negative labels on. When I have kids, I'm going to talk about their behavior, not that they're a naughty boy, but maybe they behaved in a way that you know, is naughty, but making sure I differentiate the, between the two. And, and right now, I think one of the things we're passionate about, when we sit down with our kids, we talk about their choices and their behavior, but, but try to never say you are naughty or you are... The only labels we want to give them are that you are loved and you are precious and you are valued. Yeah, so, so important. You know, I, 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 I reframe naughty behavior as challenging. Uh, I, I think that that's a much more helpful yeah. way to look at behavior uh, that, that, that we find difficult. I'd much rather say, wow, this is a really challenging situation than say you're, you're naughty because that's just not fair mm. to the child. The child's not naughty. The, the child's having a, a challenging time and so are we. We've got a couple more of these we want to look yeah. at. Dr. Justin Coulson is our guest today as we look at the words that we shouldn't be speaking to our children. More next. Everyone wants their family to be happy, but so much gets in the way. Work stress, commitments and our children's challenging behaviour are some of the usual suspects. And we can all tidy up our parenting style and get clearer about what will actually make our family happier. 21 Days to a Happier Family is the best-selling parenting book by Dr. Justin Coulson with answers to both common and complicated parenting problems. Combining cutting-edge scientific insights with real examples of family life in the trenches, you'll find dozens of strategies for making your family happier. 21 Days to a Happier Family. Available online and from booksellers everywhere and at happyfamilies.com.au. It's the Happy Families 
podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson and we're talking today about what not to say to our children and there's lots of things of course Justin like comparison we we know not to try and compare our children to other siblings but there's a couple I wanted to group together one of them being dismissal and the other one being nothing can you can you talk to us a bit about those two things yeah, so, so, so dismissal is kind of where we turn away from our children. You know, they, they come to us with a difficulty or a challenge and we just turn away. We're like, no, oh, no, nah, yeah, talk to the hand, don't give me that rubbish. Uh, and we, we turn away from them. We can even do it in a sugar-coated way. We, we can do it in like a well-meaning way where we say, um, oh, you'll be right. And, and when we do that, what we're effect- effectively doing is we're, we're dismissing our child's emotion. We're, we're saying to our child, you know, you you don't really matter that much right now and what you're going through isn't all that real for me. Uh, it, it leaves a child feeling like they're not worthy and they're not important. Uh, even more destructive though is when we just don't say anything at all and, and all too often, oh, I'll watch this happen, I'll, I'll see it happen with, with parents who they're not meaning to do it. I, I, I know, I'm sure we've all done it accidentally from time to time but there'll be a, a situation where a child is calling out to us, mum, mum, and we're in the middle of something. Oh, Dad, Dad, we're in the middle of something. And we're walking to the car and we're like, yep, what is it? And we just keep on walking or we don't even respond. Or they're having a hard time and we simply say nothing. Now, there are times where, where it's better to not say anything, but but that's not helpful for our children. It makes them feel worthless. Mm. The resilience takes an absolute battering. So where's the, where's the, uh, the balance between that and, and the other advice that we tend to get, which is if they're, they're performing uh, attention-seeking behaviour in a negative way, don't reinforce them by giving them the attention. Where's the line of balance between these two decisions? We have uh, to yeah, I think, I think that's a, a really important question that we need to consider carefully, and, and each context will be different. But if I was to summarise it in two simple dot points, I'd say number one, if they are being challenging, they don't need a good talking to, they need a good listening to. Yeah, they don't need us to ignore them, they don't need us to turn away from them, and they certainly don't need us to turn against them and start punishing them. What they need instead is for us to recognise that they're having a tough time right now and we probably should spend some time trying to understand why. Mm. And the second thing is, once we've got our head around what's going on, once again, we don't need to lecture them or punish them or anything like that, what we need to do instead is put it back onto them. And we can do this even with a three-year-old. We say, well, now that I understand what's going on, what do you think we should do about it? Mm. Or how can I help? In other words, we're encouraging them to think for themselves, to use their autonomy, to, to bolster their resilience by coming up with ideas that are going to benefit them. Mm. No, sorry, Justin. <laughs> sorry, there's one thing I don't want to do, and that's encourage them to think for themselves. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the sooner the better, yeah, we I don't say. don't want our kids thinking for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. Justin, but just before we let you go, can I talk about quickly, on the back of all of this, this is kind of a what not to do list that you have for parents here, and it's easy to run through a list like this, and as parents go, oh, I've done that, oh, I've yeah. done that. Can we just talk a moment about having grace on ourselves as parents <laughs> when we have got it wrong? Look, every single one of us, including the, the parenting expert you're talking to right now, um, has, has made several of these mistakes. Uh, it's, it's part of being a parent. We make mistakes. The wonderful, wonderful thing about parenthood is that our children are infinitely forgiving. They just want great relationships with us. And if we go to them and we say, you know what, I got that so wrong, I'm so sorry, uh, but they'll forgive us. I have a good friend and uh, when, when his teenager came home late one night having crashed the car and broken curfew and broken about 14 other rules, this friend of mine laid into his son. He just started on him like, Rah! and about 10 or 12 seconds into this lecture that he was launching into with all these well-practiced lines, he paused and he realized what he was doing and he looked at his son and he said, son, I'd like to start over. Do you mind? And his son said, dad, I'd really prefer if you didn't. We're 12 seconds in. Can you just get it over with? <laughs> <laughs> but, but what he was really saying was, you know, I got this wrong. I, I want to start again. This is, not the, this is not the way to a productive conversation. We can start over with our kids. We can get it right. And if we've got it wrong before, 
that's okay. We all do. Start yeah. again, starting today. I, I, I discovered recently it's very humbling to sit a seven-year-old down uh, by the pool and say, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. With yes. <laughs> but he, as you say, he was very forgiving and very gracious to me. <laughs> From Happy yeah, Family. Yeah, but the big cuddle after it just yeah. feels so good, doesn't it? Does. It doesn't it, it though? Does. From happyfamilies.com.au, Dr. Justin Coulson, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Love talking to you guys. For more info and all of Justin's books, podcasts and programs, you can jump online to happyfamilies.com.au and to find out how to have Justin speak at your school or you can come along to your organisation as well, go to justincoulson.com.